Hi, I'm Katherine Sizemore. I'm a senior solutions architect at MariaDB. One of the really great things about MariaDB server is its versatility with plugin engines. Today, I want to show you one of those plugin engines, the analytics engine, Column Store, and highlight how it differs from the transactional engine in ODB which is the recommended transactional engine, and is probably the engine that you're using for your tables today. The column store engine really provides some amazing analytics capabilities all inside MariaDB server. It's really an easy way to upgrade the database we all know and love to include and tackle large amounts of data and analytical queries. The demo I'll walk you through today is something that you can do yourself with two links. First, the publicly available MariaDB column store Docker image. And second, the sample data files along with step-by-step -step instructions that we'll be following here today, which can be found on this GitHub page. So let's look at a quick overview of what you can find in this video. We're going to compare InnoDB and Column Store on analytics. We'll need to start with what is Column Store Engine. Next, we'll set up a Docker image that we'll be using for the demo. And as we dive into that demo, we'll need to download the sample data. And then we can import that data into both InnoDB and Column Store and see how that import compares. Finally, we'll get to the real meat of this demonstration and run some analytical queries on both the InnoDB and Column Store tables and see those results as well. So to understand Column Store Engine, we'll first look at how it differs from InnoDB Engine. InnoDB Engine, as the default engine in MariaDB, is transactional. This is what you'll use for running most of your websites, applications, anything that's going to be creating, reading, updating, deleting, crud, on a, on a rapid basis. InnoDB is stored as rows on disk. And query performance, you need to add additional indexes, which are stored separately from the table level data um, to improve performance. Now, for analytics, column store is actually column based, which means that the data is stored in columns so that it is easier and faster to retrieve the data. It also has massively parallel processing, so it's able to crunch through very large analytical queries at a much higher speed. You'll also notice that column store does not require indexes because in essence, every column is its own index. Now there are other columnar storage engines out there, but what's nice about column store being an engine is we can plug it in and run it directly alongside other InnoDB tables on the same MariaDB server. So that enables us to have all of our transactional applications, finance, banking, healthcare, retail, all those applications running and executing against MariaDB server in ODB, and then able to serve all of our analytical tools with those column store tables on the same server. So what makes MariaDB Column Store different? It's a high performance data warehouse engine. So it actually has incredible analytical query speeds, much, much faster than your typical row based engines. And that massive, massively parallel processing for analytics is going to really take your queries to the next level. Next, as we've been discussing, it is a native MariaDB plugin. So you don't have to figure out a new installation and set up a whole new different type of database 
and learn that syntax and get all new tools. It's just going to plug in directly into what you have today. It also has blazing fast data ingestion speeds. Most of my customers report that it's faster than anything else they've tried on the market. With CP import, you're able to bypass the SQL layer and, and go straight to the data files, which removes all that overhead and really lets you be as fast as you possibly can be in importing that data. And then also another unique feature about Column Store is that it's very hardware and cost efficient. It has support for ARM processors and it has a very impressive data compression rate. It also has the ability to put your data files in S3 as opposed to a standard disk storage layer. This is a really low cost option for using object store, especially when you're getting into the terabytes and terabytes, it, terabytes and petabytes worth of data files. So jumping into what you'll need for this demo, this is the MariaDB column store Docker Hub page. And here's a quick link to it there. And this is what we'll be downloading and using for our demo. So a quick couple commands that we'll need to get this Docker image downloaded and running. Here is the run command that we'll execute to get the Docker image up and loaded and running. But for column store to start and be writable, we need to run this command, which is the provision command. And that will make it accessible and allow us to start our testing. Finally, I'm just going to execute this quick little MariaDB command, which will get us right into column store so we can start executing things. If you want any additional information, here's the link to Docker Quick Start Guide, which tells you everything you need to know about getting started. Most of these commands are exactly the same as I just discussed. Okay, let's get into it. So first here, let me show you, this is my Docker desktop. I currently don't have anything running, so um, we'll start from scratch. I wanted to point out that I do have resources um, set to six CPU and eight gigs of memory. And just in case you're wondering, I'm running Docker desktop 4.22.1. So running that running that first command. So you can see I didn't have that Docker image installed locally, so it did download it from the Docker repo. And you can see here, it's already, it's already in a running state. Now I'm just gonna execute that provision command on the Docker image. You can see some things were done behind the scenes to get it all up and running, and we have validated that the column store engine is accessible and ready to go. Now I can run that final command to actually get into MariaDB on the Docker image. And there we go. And there we can see column store is on this implementation. So now let's go into loading some data, downloading those sample data files and loading data onto column store. So here is the sample data we're going to use. It is actually the data from the Bureau of Transportation Statistics. Uh, you can see it's got a decent amount of records um, that will at least be sufficient for this, this test. So I'm just going to run through these commands briefly and, uh, get get that data downloaded. So I'm actually going to go back into the Docker image in bash so that I'm uh, on the command line of that Docker image. First, I'm going to go into a temporary folder that we can use. 
Now I'm using git clone to get the script files of how we're going to get this data. Now let's just uh, go into that folder that was created. And then I'm going to run this script run project, um, which is going to get the remaining files that weren't included in the GitHub. Here you can see the flights data, which is sizable data file, is going to download from an S3 bucket onto this Docker image. Okay, so now that that flights CSV file with all the data, all those rows in it has finished downloading, um, the rest of this run script will create sample schemas, load those that data into the database, and then it will ask me in a second here if uh, I would like to clone the data that has been loaded into column store tables, uh, if I'd like to clone that data to InnoDB for comparison. There we go. Do we want to include an InnoDB comparison schema? Yes. You can see that bulk load completed and it was only 47 seconds, 47.80 seconds um, into column store. So now I'm definitely going to fast forward this next section of the video because uh, this load into InnoDB is going to take a little bit longer. And of course, we zipped through the first two tables, uh, really small data files. You can see 400 rows and 30 rows each. Um, now we'll be waiting for that flights.csv to finish loading. And we're back. So those 38 million records took a whopping 11 minutes to load into InnoDB. But if we scroll back, it only took us 47.8 seconds to load into column store. So that's quite the impressive uh, speed difference. Let's look at the data size on disk that that ended up being. Here you can see that InnoDB BTS database that we loaded is 14 gigs on disk. So let's compare that to the column store data files, which are stored in var lib column store. Wow, 1.9 gigabytes. That's quite a difference. You can see that compression level is really taking, really taken into account here and able to give you a lot of data space back. So the final step in this demonstration is to show the query speeds. So going back to that sample column store data GitHub repository, you can see down here, there's a list of sample queries. And if you want to dig into these queries directories and see exactly what these are and what's being run, you can do that. But for our purposes, I'm just going to execute that first query into column store and see how we do. So there I've returned those 25 records in column store in three seconds. So let's run the same query in the InnoDB database. Okay, wow. So that query, that same query, which on the column store table took us only three seconds to execute and return our results, took over one minute and four seconds to return on InnoDB. Let's keep going. On to query two. Okay, 5.9 seconds to return those 468 rows on the column store tables. Now let's see how NRDB does. Okay, and there we have it. NRDB executing at two minutes and 24 seconds versus that 5.9 seconds that column store was able to return that analytical query. All right, on to query three. 
Wow, I barely had time to breathe on that one. 0.68 seconds to return that query. Let's see how InnoDB handles it. All right, so that near instantaneous query result, which we got in column store, took InnoDB 21.6 seconds. Are you ready for query four? Bam, 0.2 seconds. Wow. In ODB, how's it gonna do? 21 seconds. All right, our last sample query. 0.98, just under one second for column store. Okay, 37.8 seconds. So here I have a quick summary of uh, the results that we just had, right? Um, you can see significant differences in the execution of column store versus in ODB. Now that's not to say that column store is what you should be using across the board, right? Again, these are analytical queries, not transactional queries. In ODB is great, wonderful, fabulous for transactional queries, but when it gets to lots and lots of data and analytical workloads, column store is going to win out. And as you can see by these numbers, but you'll always need that NODB transactional for your create, read, update, delete kind of execution. So these, these two engines, even though we're showing them by comparison side by side, they really work well together. Wow, pretty impressive results. I encourage you to follow the steps in the guides and reproduce them yourself. Try it out. Um, do various different hardware as, as you get more skilled and comfortable with Calm Store. But I look forward to further discussion and hearing some of your feedback. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, as always, I wish you luck.